All right, Revelation chapter 20. All right, let me give you the fun one, okay? Now, the fun one is this, is a lot of people get infatuated with the timing of the rapture, actually. Now, here's the thing, is that the Bible mentions that no man knows the day or the hour, but the Bible says that 1 Thessalonians 5, we are to be aware of the times and seasons. So then, uh, a lot of these uh, rapture date setters, and you've seen plenty of my videos on that one, especially when September happened. I was like, look, you know, you can't just bet your soul that this is when Jesus is going to come because you're going to be damaged and hurt, and a lot of people did. Yeah. So it is very important to uh, be careful of date setting at a specific day and time. If you're going to uh, find a date of a rapture, it's best where you give an approximate date, and you can't be certain either because m humans' calendars keep changing. I was actually trying to compare it to biblical calendar and Hebrew calendars, and I was very amazed. We either passed it by we still have 200 years to go, actually, according to the rapture clock. So the, the timing's all very, very different. Timing's all very, very different. So let me explain how the timeline would go, though. It's very interesting. First of all, notice that the millennium, it says a thousand years, correct? If we look at Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, 2 all the way through uh, 6. Six times it says a thousand years, right? Okay, so we know that the millennium is a thousand years, all right? And we can say that's the end, right? Now, think about this. How much time has passed by? Pretty much approximately 6,000 or over 6,000 years of human history, right? So then we know that approximately 4,000 years during the Old Testament time, And then under the New Testament time, it's been 2,000 years. Now then in total, what's going on over here? In total, what would happen over here? Now I know it's not exactly zero, but it's like approximately, right? So in total over here, that's six and that's seven. You see that? Now, let me show you something interesting about the number 7. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. One of those interesting doctrines on the sevens. You want to know your sevens here, okay? Now think about it, okay? Why did God sanctify the seventh day, huh? Why did God says that he sanctifies the people, his people, on the seventh day? Oh, you're, you're seeing too much significance in the number seven. No, you should because God does. Look what God did. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. And God, what did he do with the seventh day? He blessed the seventh day. Okay, remember, it's uh, the word blessed, okay? And then notice that during this timeline which is 7,000 years, right? Is this 7,000 years then, this one? This is the seventh one, right, over here? Is there a lot of blessing that happens during this time? Uh, we read Revelation 20, blessed is he that partakes in the first resurrection, right? The whole earth is blessed. E everything is blessing over there, no more curse. Hmm. Okay, now uh, let me go over here. So then if you go 4,000 to 3,000, that's one. 3,000 to 2,000, uh, that's two. 2,000 to 1,000, that's three. And then 1,000 to zero, that's four. All right. Zero to 1,000, right? Zero to, we're in the New Testament. Zero to 1,000, five. And then uh, 1,000 to 2,006. And then notice over here that the seventh day God sanctified it. Seventh day, God sanctified it. Right here is seven over here. This is all considered seven over here. So then, here's the thing, is that when we reach 6,000, uh, I hope I'm not out of bounds. You're close. You're, all right, you're thank close. you. All right. When we reach 6,000, we already completed six then, right? then this means after 6,000, we should be entering number 7 then. Okay then, look at this.
So, God, verse 3, God blessed the seventh day and what? Sanctified it. The seventh day, it's considered to be his blessing. Go to the book of, uh, let's see over here. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Now, do you know what God told the Jews? God told the Jews within the Mosaic law that I gave the Sabbath to you as a sign. Why? He gave the Sabbath as a sign that they may know He is the Lord God. That they may know that He is the Lord God. And if you doubt me, you can search word that right now if you want to. He said the Sabbath day was there so that they can know the Lord. All right? Now look at this. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. While it is said today if ye will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Now look at verse 1. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his what? Rest. Okay, so that's another clue. It's called his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. So God's saying uh, uh, some of you can come short of his rest. Now it's important that we know who he's talking to. We know who he's talking to, right? Or do I have to explain it? Hebrews chapter 1, he's speaking uh, about the last days, tribulation. The title of your book is Hebrews, end times. Not only that, he mentions at verse 10 that you labored from your own work. And that matches with Revelation chapter 14, where they rested from their own works. So I think it's Revelation 14 or 16. So there's no doubt this is tribulation Jews. All right, can we agree with that? Okay, so Hebrews is talking to tribulation Jews. So they have a rest that the Lord prepared for them, that they're going to come short. Isn't it pretty obvious what this rest would be? Remember Matthew 25? I don't know if you remember that chapter. Matthew 25, God prepares them a kingdom. So this is his what? His millennial kingdom. So the rest is referring to his millennial kingdom. But uh, let's keep reading, okay? Verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay, wait, what is he talking about over here? In verse 2, he's talking about the Jews who fell away from the wilderness and could not enter in the promised land, which is the land of Israel. Right. Now remember, where is Jesus Christ reigning in the millennium? Israel. Okay, if you don't believe, uh, you can look at the context of chapter 3, verses 11, all the way through 19. It's speaking about those Jews who failed to listen to Moses and they failed to enter the promised land, which is Israel. That's the rest. That is the rest. Okay, so if we know that this is the rest over here, then let's see. Okay, keep reading. Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, we'll read verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Uh, remember where Jesus said at Matthew 25 to the tribulation saints who enter the kingdom? Enter the kingdom that's prepared from the foundation of the world. Okay, so is, it, uh, is this convincing enough that we know this is referring to the millennial rest? So we're... It's getting to a millennial rest over here. Now look at verse 4. For he's, he ties it to something here. Look at this. He's tying this millennial rest to something. Verse 4. He, for he spake in a certain place of the what? Oh my, oh my, oh my. And then you thought the Bible was boring. You thought Hebrews 4 was, this is just uh, interesting examples. Or is God trying to show you? 
of the seventh day on this wise. God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Why in the world would the author of Hebrews mention about the Sabbath here? Yeah. About the rest. Because the seventh day is the day of rest at verse 4. Verse 4. So undoubtedly, what we understand so far, okay, we can agree with this. Can we agree that undoubtedly, Sabbath, seventh day, has to be tied to millennium? Oh, yeah. Rest? Yeah, that, that much we know, okay? That much we know that the Sabbath day is tied to millennium. All this other weird number stuff, I'll explain later, okay? We just have to go step by step so you can know more clearly. Now, look at this. He mentioned at verse 7, Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not ha afterward have spoken of a what? Another day. So look at this. Verse 8, he has to tie this to a day. You see that? Verse 7, he has to limit. He has to tie it to a day. Now, is, can we agree with that? Can we agree the millennial rest has to be tied, has to be restricted to something that's the Sabbath? Now, if that's too deep for you, you go back home and rewind and uh, you go home and then look through, the, read through that again, all right? Because I got to get going. If you want me to finish this, I got to get going. Just remember what you heard. Write the notes. Don't believe me like a tree full of owls and just go home and study your Bible and read through again. All right? Now, let me drop a few bombs over here. Go to Isaiah 11 and then 2 Peter 3. Go to 2 Peter 3 and Isaiah 11. Let me drop a few bombs over here. Wouldn't this be a great time to close Bible study, right? Wouldn't this be a great time where the online internet just suddenly shut down, right? <laughs> Look at 2 Peter 3 and Isaiah 11. Here we go. All right. All of this is tied to the millennium, right? Blessed, sanctify, know the Lord, rest. Yes? Yeah. All right. We know that's all tied to the millennium. Sabbath is tied to millennium, correct? Yeah. All right, what does this have to do with timing? Look at this. 2 Peter chapter 3. Now look at this. Look at the context. What is the context? Verse 4. Verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his what? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Wait a minute. His coming is over here, right? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so... I hope you're not lost. When he's coming here, they're talking about his coming. Is, can we agree with that? Yeah. If you, that's the context of verse 4 all the way downward. It's tied to his coming. Yeah. All right? People being ignorant. And they were ignorant of God's judgments, for example, that the Lord would bring up. So, his coming, that's the context. That's why God says at verse 8, But beloved, be not what? Ignorant. ignorant. Why? Because of if you go back to verse 5, go to verse 5. For this they willingly are what? They're ignorant of what? Verse 4, his coming, yeah? Okay, can we, so they're ignorant of his coming. So God's saying, if we go to verse 8, don't be ignorant of this one that's tied to his coming. He gave you a timeline. He gave you a timeline here. Don't be ignorant of his coming because he's giving you a timeline. That one day is with the Lord as a what? A thousand years, a thousand years and a what? A thousand years. As what? One day. Remember, to the Lord, where it can be like a thousand years going on down here, can be one day up to God. Yeah. Remember Genesis 2? He has uh, six days, but the seventh day, he stopped. Why didn't he go for day number eight? You yeah, thought about that? Good. Day number nine, 10, 11, 12. Why did he stop at seven? And that's an end of that system, that time system. And then you start fresh. Some, something ends here. And his coming to what? A thousand years is one day. Okay, we counted, right? That's 6,000 years then. Six days, right? One day is a thousand years. 6,000 years. Seven, this should be what? The 7,000 year. So when you're ending, see, we're hitting, so this is, when we pass 6,000, 
we're entering seven. And when we enter seven, what are you supposed to do at that day? You're supposed to rest. All right, I don't care if people don't need that, whatever. But this is where they're supposed to rest, okay? So when they're entering seven here, they should be resting. Wait a minute. Then if you're saying that this is the timeline Jesus was coming, right? Second Peter 3? Yes or no? Second Peter 3. Yes, that's his coming, right? Don't be ignorant of that. And they tie his coming to this date system. One day is a thousand years. That's his coming over here. Then look at this. And this one they put as seventh day rest. This is very befitting. Because look at Isaiah 11 now. All right. Oh, to joy, man. Now, let's wrap it up here, all right? Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 10, verse 10. And in that what? Day. Oh, God takes days very seriously. <laughs> there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his what? Rest. Oh, wait, wait, did, wait what? What? Okay, do we agree this is the millennium, verse 10? Yes, he's coming down, he's reigning, and he has his rest prepared. Wait a minute, Hebrews 3, he has his rest prepared for the tribulation saints. What day did God rest on? Seven, Seven Genesis 2. And a day seems like a thousand years to God. Think about it, use, use your head. If that's God's clock system, I mean, do you believe as it says, a thousand years seems like one day to God, right? So that in God's mind, when a thousand years is going on, every 1,000 years, God's seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, and then what? Amen. Now, use your head. Which day do you think God would pick the best for his millennial reign? Amen. Ah, obviously this one. Wouldn't he rest on that? Wouldn't he sanctify the people? Wouldn't he bless it? And oops, I think we're seeing all of this at the millennium. Perfect completion. Amen. So is this abstract or is this doctrine? This is doctrine. This is for real, actually. Amen. So look at uh, Isaiah 11. And it shall come to pass in that again day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of the people. So this is all the world around him. Look at verse 12. He shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. That's true. He's gathering all the nations for judgment of what? Nations. nations. And he's restoring the nation of what again? Israel. See that? Keep reading. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Well, how about that? Uh, let's keep reading over here. So notice that if you read verse 14, 15, 16, God does away with the Gentiles, right? Uh, but by the way, um, if you look at verse 4 and 5 and 6, 7, isn't that the millennium? Yeah. Look at vo verse 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah. It's the millennium. Uh, look at this one, verse 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my what? Holy mountain. Holy mountain. It's sanctified. For the earth shall be full of the what? Wait, they will know the Okay, go to Ezekiel 37. This is undoubtable then. Look at the book of Ezekiel 37. Then do you know what that means, brethren? If we already passed the 2000 AD, then that means uh, we should be over here. But what's holding, why is the dating off? The dating's off is simple, like I told you. Calendars are off, they keep changing. Yeah. When I looked at Hebrew calendars and biblical calendars, like I told you before, we either pass 66 years or we need 200 years to go, actually. So it can vary. But you notice that we're not far. Yeah. We're like at the corner. No wonder COVID-19 happened. No wonder everything's like, man, everything's becoming one world order and man, we're so close. Yeah, we're close. We're literally at the doorstep. Amen. How about that, man? Woo, man, that book is amazing. Good. Blow up your mind every single time, like I told you. Amen. Blow up your mind every single time. All right, so we're going to look at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Chapter 37. Now, look at verse 28. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do what? 
Sanctify. Wait, it's sanctified here. Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Wow, look at uh, verse 23, 23. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out uh, of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. See, that's, this is the millennium. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Now, I would uh, there are tons of verses I can give to you, but then I'd waste too much time. I would recommend you this. Look up these words. All right, Brother Sean loves this. All right, so look up these words, okay? And I guarantee you, you're going to find of where the Lord connects these words with the millennium and type down Sabbath too with some of these words, and you're going to see that those words connected to Sabbath.